Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Dental Mnemonics, the channel where learning is always smart and fun. Today we are back with a bang and biting into a high yield topic from Neville's Oral Pathology. As you can see, today we will be discussing about sarcoidosis and we are going to make it ridiculously easy to remember with a fun mnemonics. As you can see in the figure, there is a violent shark who was jogging and dripping his saliva and hunting for his prey, the starfish. This is not just a weird image, it's your new memory hook for sarcoidosis. So let's break it down. So as you can see in this GIF, like there's a violent shark who is dripping his saliva, who can't wait to hunt for his prey, the starfish. And the starfish goes like, oh no, please don't eat me. So let's break it down. So the violent stands for, like in sarcoidosis, we can see the violaceous indurated lesion as you can see in the figure and these lesions are termed as lupus or neo. So now coming to the acronym of SARC, like this is very important, like the S stands for in sarcoidosis since it's a granulomatous inflammation. So in histopathological feature, like we can see the laminated basophilic calcifications, often degenerated lysosomes and they are termed as Sauman bodies. So S stands for Sauman bodies, the H stands for Hyler lymphadenopathy and Hereford syndrome. I will discuss this later about these two terms, but just memorize that hyalur lymphadenopathy, we see the enlarged mediastinal nodes in chest x-ray of person who is suffering from sarcoidosis. So now coming to the A, it stands for S elevation and asteroid bodies. Remember the sark, he was so violent and he could not wait for his prey, the starfish. So the starfish here stands for asteroid bodies because this is another feature which we see in histopath where the asteroid bodies they resemble like star shaped stellate inclusions. So remember the starfish for asteroid bodies. So there are two bodies in histopathological feature of sarcoidosis one is the Sauman bodies and other is the asteroid bodies. So again the other A like ACE angiotensin converting enzyme. So currently for the diagnosis of sarcoidosis we see this elevated level of ACE enzyme and it can, it can be a helpful tool for the diagnosis of sarcoidosis. So now coming to R it stands for restrictive lung disease and rheumatologic overlap. As we know that the primary organ which affects sarcoidosis is lungs. However it can also affect other sites like salivary gland, skin, eyes and lymph nodes which I will discuss later in the video. Just remember R stands for restrictive lung disease and the most primary organ that affects sarcoidosis is lung. Now coming to the K, it stands for Vim taste. Like in the past, a skin test for sarcoidosis, the Vim test was performed by intradermal injection of a sterilized suspension of human sarcoid tissue. However, this procedure is no longer used because of difficulty in obtaining material for the test and also concerns related to its accuracy. As I discussed earlier, currently we do the S elevation test. So just remember K for BIM test. So the acronym SARC is a really vital tool for us to understand the important feature in sarcoidosis. So remember there was the salt was dripping his saliva so this all I want to say is that it affects the salivary gland and it results in triad mimicking Zogren syndrome or some pronounce it as Zogren syndrome but in the mnemonic there was a violent shark who was jogging and waiting for his prey so you can just memorize jog as in Zogren syndrome or Zogren syndrome and it mimics the triad of Zogren syndrome which is very common like the triad of dry eyes, dry mouth or gerstomia and keratoconjunctivitis sicca. So that covers the saliva part of sarcoidosis. And now coming to our last part of the video, I told you that there were two terms which I will discuss later, the H in SARC, one for hyalur lymphadenopathy and the other H for Hereford syndrome. So first coming to Lofgren syndrome, like there are two distinctive clinical syndromes associated with the acute phase of sarcoidosis. First, I'll discuss the Lofgren syndrome. So the first H, which stood for hyalur lymphadenopathy, it falls in triad of Lofgren syndrome. So you need not worry because I have a simple mnemonic, like the Lof in Lof G stands for like loaf of bread. 
So as we know that log of a braid is not single, it's multiple. So you can memorize it's not unilateral, but it's bilateral, higher lymphadenopathy. So in the chest x-ray, we see this feature in Lofgren syndrome. And the other part makes it really easy. The R-E-N, the R stands for arthralgia. So log for log of braid, R for arthralgia. And the remaining E and N stands for erythrema nodosum. So this makes it really easy to understand the triad of Lofgren syndrome. So just to revise, the LOF stands for loaf of bread. The loaf of bread is not unilateral but bilateral. So bilateral hyaluronic lymphadenopathy. R for arthralgia and E N for erythrema nodosum. And the other S which stands for Edward syndrome or uveal parotid fever. So the uveal parotid fever can be really helpful because the name itself explains everything. So like as I said, though the primary organ that affects sarcoidosis is the lungs, however it also affects other organs and one organ is the eye. So mainly it affects the anterior part of the uvea of the eye, so anterior uveitis. Parotid stands for parotid enlargement, as I already discussed how it affects the salivary gland, so you can memorize as it affects the saliva, so salivary gland, so parotid for parotid enlargement and fever as fever with facial paralysis. So this is to sum up the Hitford syndrome and its prior. So just to before I end my video, let's go with a recap mnemonic time. So there was a violent sar gripping his saliva to hunt the starfish. The violent stands for violaceous indurated lesion, which is termed as lupus pornio, and the acronym SARC as for summon bodies. H, the two S very important, also signifying the two important syndromes, the Lofgren syndrome and the Hilbert syndrome. A is the diagnostic test, which is the S elevation, and our, of course, the prey starfish or the asteroid bodies with stellate or star-shaped inclusions. R is signifying the primary organ that it affects, since it stands for restrictive lung disease. And the K, this can be asked in the viva post, like the test which we do not perform right now but the ancient test for sarcoidosis was the beam test and of course the salivary gland involvement which mimics the Jogren syndrome as the shark was jogging and hunting for his prey and it's triad and the loaf of bread for Lofgren syndrome and also uveal parotid fever so that wraps up for sarcoidosis the shark you don't want to forget and if this helps so please go and like the video subscribe to our channel and please click the bell button so you never miss out on powerful mnemonics again so if you got any tricky dental or any medical topic not only related to oral path but related to entire dentistry that you are stuck on please drop it in the comment section and we are always here to help signify your studies so until next time keep swimming through those textbook like a shark and remember smart is the new cool Goodbye for now and thank you.